Hey everybody, welcome to the Bourbon Battalion. This is Bobby. Uh, tonight we're going to do a recon report. Uh, recon report is for us to go and look at something and review a new bottle or something we haven't had in a long time and just revisiting it. Tonight, something new. Um, we're going to go through and look at Augusta Distillery, which is in Augusta, Kentucky. Uh, they're Buckner's limited release single barrel cash strength 13 year. So Augusta is just over the border of Ohio on the other side of the river, uh, southeast of Cincinnati. And this is a sourced bourbon. So we this is sourced out of Bardstown. And we're going to jump in and we're going to review it. Um, we always do a sixth step and this one we're adding a number seven, a seventh step. So we're going to go through, we're going to look at it, see what we see go through the nose what do we smell we're going to go through our our full frontal assault which is our palate we're going to see what our finish is our tail end charlie we're going to put that aside and come back to it later and then we're going to do a second pour and that's our about face we'll reintroduce it to our now acclimated palate and then we're going to go back to the back blast and see what we think it will be like if it's decanted seventh step tonight is pr is price point is this worth the MSRP value that they put on it? $199 is a pretty steep price point. So we're going to review that, look at it, and see what we can come up with. So having said that, let's pour this and get this show on the road. So I always go through and make sure that my acclimation process is thorough because these people spend a lot of time and effort on what their craft is and making a good something to come out to you, right? So I feel like we need to do the same thing, right? So let's go in with a first pour. I'll set this back up here so everybody can see what it is. So what do we see on the eyes? Let me get it around here a little bit. Um, it's got a nice, it's got a nice it's got nice eyes. I mean, it's a nice, beautiful, a dark amber, kind of a amber blood orange. Somewhere in that area. Real pretty drink. You can tell it has some age to it. Um, definitely a bourbon. It's not white. Um, I'm looking at the legs for the viscosity. I've got a nice little halo going right now. It's creeping real slow. I'm not breaking up. It's just creeping. So that tells me I'm going to have a pretty good finish. I would expect it to be at least a mid-range finish, maybe long because it's going so slow, and it should be a really good coker. So I would say overall, you know, it's a beautiful rich, you know, it kind of has appearance of like cherry wood, uh, you know that dark rich cherry wood that you see in the middle of a, a split cherry, somewhere in there, um, yeah, looks good. So, so far, I'm happy with it. Now someone's like, how can you not be happy with something? Well, when you look at it, you can tell certain things. So for me, I'm okay with this. So let's dive into the nose. It's definitely a, it's definitely a high bourbon, high corn mash bill. It's sweet, really syrupy. Got a good age statement, which we would expect from a 13-year-old. A little woody. There's this hint of mint in there. There's a there's a there's a there's a solid cocoa presence here. For me, when I get a cocoa presence, I have a very distinct thought, and that's always the malted barley. For me, if I've got an above average malted barley, I get cocoa and I get chocolate. Mostly cocoa, like cocoa powder. Maybe like a a, a stewed peach and apricot blend, a thick, rich that with a hint of like cocoa on it. 
It's got a great nose. Really nice nose. Let's go into our full frontal assault. Straight to the palate. Cheers. Wow, you're definitely you're definitely saying that's 114 and above. That's got a great proof. Uh, really sweet as it comes in and then just coats all over. Big coat. It's got this spicy, I have it, I'm tingling in my tongue and my numb, uh, I get that little twinge up in my gums, which I like. There's this, there's definitely a cocoa presence here. Like a, a significant cocoa presence. Now I am getting um, some really good oak notes. I'm getting some great oak notes towards the end here. I still have, I still have a syrupy cocoa somewhere in here. There's, I mean, there's somewhere in this syrupy maple happiness. They've someone put some cocoa trying to enhance my pancakes, and it's working. I've never put cocoa in my pancakes. Maybe I probably should. Man, that's this is really tasty for a full frontal assault going right in. That tells me the second pour of this is going to be really good. So far, I'm not unhappy. Am I two hundred dollars happy? I don't know. I haven't got to the second pour. Let's go in here. Strong wood notes on the, the third sip there. That's strong wood notes in the back. A long finish. I could. I don't usually spend a lot of time as far as lengthy time on reviews. I spend a lot of quality time into what I'm doing. You could sit and talk for a while and not have to revisit this while. I mean, it's got a great lingering finish. Kind of like if you had some... Uh, some dark cocoa that's just sitting on the back of your tongue and it's dissolving and it's it's pleasant take a last little sip and we'll put the back glass aside yeah so I always leave a little bit in here not a lot because I want to put it over to the side I want to see what it will become later when I come back to it and the reason why we do that is because I think not enough people decant. I think you should have plenty of decanters on your bar, whether it be scotch, whether it be Irish whiskey, whether it be um, a weeder, a rye, whatever you have, put a plethora of them and let them breathe. You know, there's going to be some oxygen uh, get into it and it's going to open up and it's going to change drastically. Plenty of times I've talked to people that have started, they've went through my reviews, they've tried some different things, and I'm hearing more and more people say, you know, there's something I had that I really thought wasn't that great on the first pour. By the second pour, it got really good. And I said, well, yeah, you have to be fully acclimated. It's hard to get acclimated on a one and a half to two ounce pour unless you're taking your time. Now, it's hard for some people to take time on a one ounce pour. Me personally, oh, I can sip on one ounce for a while, but I get it. So that's why we want to revisit it. I always spend a little bit of time letting my mouth acclimate to what's going on. So let's pour it again. And we do a second pour in the same sitting, right? So I asked, someone asked me the question the one day is, do you do a second pour in the same sitting? Always, I do. I don't need this to be a big one. I just need it to be enough that I can get through and still pull. Man, that's just amazing. That's, I mean, that's this is really nice, guys. I promise you, this is a really nice drink. Especially if you're a proof guy. But I will say this. 
I am a proof guy. I like the high proof. I like the sting. I like that. This doesn't hurt you like a 119. You're like, 119, whoa, that's way too hot. I beg to differ. This is a little bit different. So most of you guys know I, re I do some reviews and I spend a lot of time with my brother who's the gunny. And the gunny does not like high proof stuff. And he really enjoyed this. And uh, so take it for what it is. It doesn't hurt. That 119 is not hateful. So let's see if the nose has changed, right? Because it usually does. Because the reason why that changes is you're fully acclimated now. Your nose, all the vapors that's been going on here. So if you think of like uh, the guy you referenced earlier, that it's like if you had Vix Vapo, but it was just beautiful bourbon vapors. It's kind of like that. So it's really nice. And I laughed. This is, man, that's, the nose is fantastic. This is a better nose on the second pour than it was the first. It's fruit. It smells a little bit more octane than it did the first time. And I get this, I, st I still don't get away from the cocoa nut. It's like a, but there's a, there's a fruity presence there, you know, and that comes from the, the rye. It's like a chocolate covered cranberries, for what that's worth. So I don't know why it's like that, but to the palate. Cheers. Mmm. Man, that is silky smooth. With a nice bite. Comes onto the palate really smooth. Really enjoyable. Opens up to a spicy note as it's coming through to this chocolate mid to late finish with a chocolate oak presence so you're, you're getting into that that 13 year chocolatey experience but getting woody so I'm picking up a little bit more spices and a little bit more of the um, maybe more of the antiquated wood you know something that's a little bit antiquish And that's, this is really good. Guys, this is really a good drink. I like it a lot. It's got mouth feels. I feel it everywhere. It coats everywhere. I've got a great long finish that's talking to me for a while. It's got great proof point notes. And it's got great flavor notes. But then again, the question is, not only do we like it, but do we $199 like it? The only way I know how to evaluate that is to put it up against something that I know I love that's a higher MSRP. So we're going to pour something to compare it to. I am going to pour... And apologize for that. The one I always go to, Evan Williams 23. So why Evan Williams 23? Well, Evan Williams 23 is delicious. It's a 23 year old Evan Williams. It's 107, right? 107 proof. And uh, it's liquid gold. So I had no problem MSRP $350 on this. I think after tax it was like 364 or whatever it was. I, I'm willing to buy this and I will buy it again and again, although I can only get one bottle each year, which I get, but it sucks. And um, so we're going to put it against each other. I want to see if it's worth or as comparable to this. So let me pour it. So we're going to take some Evan Williams 23 year old. Yeah, I'm just going to put it up against it. I know I would pay $350 for this all day long. So, don't know what happened. That was weird. 
So hopefully that didn't record like that. So. So. But anyway, we're gonna go through here. Oh, Evan Windows 23. There's no way to not notice that that's completely different. But they both have, even though Evan Williams is smoother and really, really age pres uh, presence, it has a cocoa, like, because it's got a high malted barley, right? This is a high malted barley. Although it's a higher rye than barley, and Evan Williams 23 is a higher barley than rye. So it makes sense. They kind of smell similar. The Evan Williams is smoother, not as proof point, which is obvious. This is a single barrel. The Buckner's is a single barrel, where the Evan Williams is not. So, you know, I mean, it's been cut to proof. But uh, on the nose, I'm not hating each one, either one of them because I'm still getting a coconut on both of them. There's definitely, the, the, you know, it's definitely a bourbon, right? You do get the normal bourbon notes you get in there. You get that brown sugar um, mixed with maybe a, like a, a, a thick maple syrup. You may even pull the, uh, if you stirred in a little molasses, and maybe a smidge of butter. On here, it's like sweet corn that's sent straight from heaven. It's so good. But I'm not hating on either one of these. So let's go to the let's go to the palate. So I'm going to do the Evan Williams 23 because I already know what this tastes like. That's really good. So the similarities, really coating. I definitely get a much more wood presence, which makes sense because we're talking 23 years. The tannings in the wood really fire up the back of my tongue. And the idea that I get like this saliva note, and my it just it's mouth watering and good. But that's pretty significant. I get that almost every time I have a high tannings from the wood, smooth. I don't get the huge proof point. Um, the Evan Williams 23 at 107, I don't even think it drinks 107-ish. It drinks more like 100. Um, so let's go to Augusta. And that's really good. I'm not hating on either one of these. You know, everybody knows me, I Evan Williams 23, I love that all day long. This is really good. I'd say that, you know, that the significant difference is obviously the age. You know, you don't get as predominant a wood note. You, it's there, but it's not as... I don't feel like my tongue went crazy like it normally does. It smells a little proofier. But both of them smell of a brown sugar type of maple brown sugar oatmeal that's been drizzled with cocoa or chocolate. Both of them have that. So, the final thoughts. Would I buy another $200 bottle of this? And my answer is yes, I would. Do I think it's worth it? Well, compared to the Evan Williams and what that's like, do I think it's $200 good? I do. I have no problem with this at all. Is it a fair MSRP? If I'm taking it against other MSRPs that I have paid comparable to that, then yes. Do I think that's a bold statement to come out like that? Might it chase some people away? Yes. But I have no problem saying, I wish it was cheaper so more people could enjoy it. But I have no problem. If you like a good 
bourbon with an H statement that has mouthfeels, that has a really good flavor and not just burn. Uh, the burn on this is not unpleasant. I think it actually tastes maybe like five proof points lower. I don't know that I would have put it at 119. I was thinking more like 114. But it's so good. I mean, it's so good. Um, I don't have a problem. You know what? I've paid more for stuff that I didn't like than this. So that's why I'm saying I don't have a big problem with it. I just wish that they would have made it more affordable that everybody could go out and try it and... You know, but I know it's a limited release, whatever. So, overall, the the Buckner's 13-year-old single barrel cast strength is a big thumbs up for me. I like it a lot. I think it's really good. Uh, the price point is steep, but comparable to things I have paid that were around that price range that aren't as good as it. This is a really good, good drinker. You could sit there and sip really quietly for a while and be perfectly happy for a long time. Would I make this a drinker? No. One is too expensive. And and two, it's a high it's a high proof. Now, for me, I'm I'm a high proof guy. But even then, I'm not gonna blow through um, two hundred dollar bottles just because. You know, usually this is gonna be like if I get together with friends and uh, people that want to come in and sit down, I'm going to enjoy it. So, overall, Buckner's, we like. We think the proof point's great. The overall flavor profile's good. Taste is good. Price point's a little high, but I will buy it again. I will buy another one, and I have no problem with it. So, Buckner's single barrel cash strength, we like. For me, I'll probably go get one tomorrow. This was the Gunnies on my recommendation. And so, I'm going to probably go grab one because I think it's pretty darn good. So, from Bobby at the Bird Battalion, take care of those to take care of you. Be good to each other. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.